Greg Bonin, the creator of Baywatch, the most watched show in television history with over a billion viewers weekly around the world at its peak, shares at her memorial service on January 21st, 2011, what Dorothy Franny Langkamp meant to him. I was 19 years old and I had not made the Olympic team. I came close, but it was a dream of mine to go to the Olympics. I realized I could go anyway. If I didn't even make the team, I could still go. I had tickets to nowhere. My mom and dad said, have a ball, get over there. So I went and I met Jimmy in the first five minutes. I literally had the bags in my hand. He said, come to the soccer game. And really, I, I don't remember that game, but I remember Jimmy Langkamp. And we had a great time. And the most important thing, I, I, I've heard some incredible words and, and this woman, I'm gonna tell you what, not who she was, you know who she was. I'm going to tell you what she meant. And I was 19 years old. Uh, I, I had a dream of going to the Olympics and seeing the games. And she sat Jimmy and I down. And she said, what do you boys want to see? And I wanted to see Spitz swim. I saw all seven of his medals. I wanted to see USA, Russia, and basketball. I wanted to see all the important things. I wanted to see the 100 meter final. I wanted to see all the things you couldn't go see, right? And she said, okay, here's what we do. He told you the story. She showed us how to do it a couple times by ourselves. And then she said, boys, you're on your own. And she taught us that you can do that. And she basically said, what are you going to do about it? You want to go see the USA, Russia basketball game? What are you going to do about it? So we went and we saw, we snuck in and we sat in the 50 yard line seats. It was a few years later. I had then come to know her. I, I, I did not know who she was. I really did not. She was 59 years old when I met her. And uh, her, her name meant nothing to me, uh, her energy. All I knew was that if you wanted to walk with Dorothy Langkop, you better have tennis shoes on and you're going to jog because this woman could walk fast. And you had to keep up with her. I soon learned that everybody knew her, everyone respected her. I saw the way people responded to her, and I learned by watching. I'm 19 years old. And the next thing I knew, they took me out to meet Jack Hennessy. And I remember Dorothy saying on our drive home, now you've met Jack Hennessy. What are you going to do about it? Thank you notes. Keep in touch. I invited him to lunch. He encouraged me to go to business school. I went. He became my mentor. I went into sports marketing. He hired me away from that. He showed me how to make movies. He showed me how to dream. Then he died. And I was halfway through my tenure, tenure with him. Dorothy was always in touch with me, and I was always in touch with Jimmy. And I remember her getting on the phone, says, Jimmy said Jack Hennessy died. What are you going to do about it? I'll keep the company going. So we did. We kept the company going. Five more years go by, I got fired. Phone rings. The family didn't like me. It's a long story, but I got fired. She calls me up. Jimmy says you got fired. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I, I guess I'll keep going. So I formed my own company. I got a phone call from the Olympic Committee. Every single client we had, that I made movies for, said, we hear you got fired, we want to go with you. So I ended up with my own company, and I made a bunch more movies, and she knew I wanted to make a movie in 1984 of the Olympic Games in LA. And Don Miller said, if you can figure out a way to make this movie, and Baron Pittenger said, if you can figure out a way to make this movie, we'll help you. And I said, what's that mean? Well, we don't have any credentials for you to make this movie. I had a camera crew of 20. We have not one credential. In fact, nobody wants you to make this movie except for us. But we'll give you a bunch of tickets. And I'm thinking to myself, well, OK, I got about a million dollars worth of a movie to make, no credentials, and I'm going to take money from a sponsor. And the phone, I hung up the phone with Don Miller, and my hand was on the phone, and it rang again. 
picked it up. It's Dorothy. Jimmy says, you didn't get credentials. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? And I said, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll make the movie from the seats. She says, perfect, that's the name of the movie, A View from the Seats. And I'm, okay, so we called it A View from the Seats. For the whole games, I made the best movie of my life. And I soon realized that Dorothy Langkamp liked challenges. If it was the only woman in the event, if it was to raise two great boys, if it was to golf, skate, compete against the boys, she loved a challenge. And when she met me, I think she saw another challenge. She, she, she challenged me to get in all the events I wanted to get in. She challenged me to go meet Jack Hennessy. She challenged me to follow up with Jack Hennessy. She challenged me to stay in business when Jack died. She challenged me to make an Olympic movie when I didn't have any rights to make an Olympic, Olympic movie. Next thing I know, my biggest dream was to create this show about lifeguards. And I th thought I could do it, and it became famous, but nobody really knew about it at the time, except for Dorothy, uh, to make my dream come true. And so I created this show called Baywatch. And uh, the history is easy for you to remember, but the specifics that you may not remember are that after one year on the network, that show was canceled. We did 22 hours of network Baywatch, and it was canceled. And no show in the history of television before or since had ever been canceled and gone on in some other scenario, in any other scenario. So you know what happened, I got a phone call. Hi, Greg, it's Dorothy. Jimmy says your show was canceled. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? And it didn't matter to her that no show had ever been resurrected, that I owed a ton of people a ton of money if I was going to do it. And she just said, what are you going to do about it? And the challenge is what I appreciated. I guess she challenged me. She saw a challenge. So I didn't know what to do, but I stumbled forward just like I did all the other times with her. And I found a way to keep that show on the air. It stayed on the air for 11 more years. Uh, was the accomplishment of my lifetime. And uh, that was in good part, so you can see from Dorothy's influence. And you don't really realize what a person like this means to you until you get to reflect back on all of these incidences, which as you're going through them, you really don't realize it. But I soon realized what this woman meant to so many people out here, and that in a sense she meant the same and, and, and more so. If, if, I, if there's ever an example of what one person can do to challenge another person to do their best and become the best they can be, uh, it's me. So anyway, this, this lady was awesome. Uh, I, I miss her memory. Uh, I, I miss knowing that the next challenge I have, she might not call. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll know what she would have asked. What are you going to do about it? So anyway, I love you, Dorothy.